We'll go live. Hello everyone! Well, first of all, I am just going to check that everything is good before I introduce our awesome guest here. So, I think everything is good. I think everybody can hear me. Um, let me just do a little quick test of everything. Because um, I'm a rookie in this stuff, so you know how, you know how I roll, guys. Um, yeah, you, we can hear, okay. M is here, and he can hear. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be a joke, but... Okay, without further ado, I'm going to introduce the first guest ever of the Trauma Llamas and Pajamas uh, segment. Da -da -da -da, Kelly! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hello, hello! Hi, Kelly, how are you? I am... Um... Very well, thank you, Jennifer. Thanks for having me on your fabulous podcast slash stream slash llamas in pajamas. I love it. Thank you. Thank you for wearing a pajama and looking all cozy. <laughs> of course. This is the easiest kind of stream. You know, get ready for bed and then go live. Perfect. <laughs> Great. I mean, I went all out with a onesie, but, you know, I just, I really wanted to get this <laughs> The llamas are down! The llamas are down! Oh my god, let's save them! Hold on! Send While you rescue. save the llamas, I'll show everyone... It's okay! My, uh, Hold on! This is my uh, emotional support uh, thingy. It's a, a theta... He's adorable! <laughs> Marilyn Honig, and he's very squishy and fun to play with, so he's here oh. in place of a llama, because I don't have one. <laughs> he is adorable. You froze a little bit, uh, but uh, but we could see the potato. That's the most important part. You froze, right. and now <laughs> our much-awaited... <laughs> you became small from my screen. <laughs> Hello! I don't know why. I think... So, guys, um... Kelly's um, stream is a little bit cursed today. I don't know what's going on. So we're just going to have to brace ourselves because, um, yeah, this might happen. Um, but it's okay because we Kelly's back. Now she's a little bit small, but we're going to just put her back. Okay, guys, we're going to go put her back here. And uh, chop her a little bit. <laughs> this is all a bit cha chaotic, but I hope you guys find it entertaining. So we have Kelly back, okay? Hope this doesn't happen again. Um, or if it does, I'm just going to put Kelly full screen and I'm just uh, a voice in, in her head <laughs> asking questions. That sounds so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a voice in your head. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, well, um, for those people that do not know who you are, uh, just, you know, introduce yourself using, just with a sentence or two. Go ahead. Sure. Um, my name is Kelly Copter, like helicopter. Um, I create content on YouTube. I provide in-flight edutainment. Uh, currently, I am covering cults, specifically Scientology, because I grew up in it. Um, and I am sharing people's stories um, and exposing the abuses of this crazy cult. There you go. That's the quickest way I could say it. <laughs> I, I, I love how you said crazy cult and it just like <laughs> chopped you again. I don't know, man. <laughs> Um, how it just keeps chopping you, but I mean the sound came out like I, I don't know But uh, I will definitely contact the OBS people and make a complaint because this is not okay um, sure. Talk to a manager people. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the manager <laughs> um, So it's fine. 
We're going to be fine. We're all going to be fine. Yeah, it looks completely normal to me because we're in Skype yes. doing this. So to me, it, it doesn't look, I don't know what's going on. So I won't see it until the replay, but I'm here for the chaos, Jen. I'm here for yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I, I promised entertainment and I think I am delivering. <laughs> okay, you're back. So I, I don't know, like, I just, I wish I could freeze <clears throat> the, yeah, you just keep getting big and small. That sounds very bad. We don't do no body shaming here, okay, people? This is just... <laughs> okay. Well, you already introduced yourself. I'm uh, Jennifer. Um, you guys um, probably know me already. I'm that person that uh, has trouble with streams and always has some fun news in the streams. And <laughs> besides that, I am a narcissistic abuse survivor. Uh, who escaped three months ago, and um, I am here just doing this uh, stream, uh, this segment in the um, in the Ego Next Door podcast, which um, the goal is to just show a little bit of a laid back approach as well, because we talk about a lot of serious and heavy emotional stuff here. So I also think it's important to talk a little bit about positive things and things that make us cope and that make us feel um, better because, you know, we don't want to just ruminate on the bad stuff. We also want to try to find solutions and kind of see what we can do uh, to, to feel better and to just heal collectively. Um, so, yeah, and today we're going to talk about um, music as a coping strategy for, from trauma and from anxiety and depression and all that. So, um, yeah, I think it would be very interesting for you to tell us um, a little bit about how did you get into music and singing in particular. Yeah, I, I want to say that I love the idea for your whole sort of stream looking at different kind of um you know coping strategies arts is such a big deal to so many people and there's so many people in this community that are creatives you know um so i do think it's a great a great topic to talk about um music is definitely something that's super super important to me um i have had like singing training i guess uh like lessons at school probably since i was 11 but um you know when I was younger, I actually, it's kind of crazy when you think about it, but my mom had a keyboard, right? And she would kind of play little songs and sing them. And I was like, I want to do that too. Like, that looks really fun. Um, you know, so uh, that kind of got me excited about it. But when I was in um, my sort of third, I guess you guys would call it third grade or year three or whatever, in a primary school or what's little school called? elementary no Element uh, one in, below elementary? In, in america we say elementary school yes element elementary school so um <laughs> yeah in a in elementary school or primary school um we had a choir like a my a music teacher set up a choir and uh we would do like gigs in manchester you know we would do little concerts and stuff and i absolutely loved it i just thought it was so fun you know, I was with a bunch of my friends, we were all singing together and it was just good, good time. So I, I found um, some joy in that really. Um, yeah. You know, so yeah, since I was, since I was little, I've loved, loved music for a long time. So an absolute natural. And I mean, it shows by the presence you have on stage, even in the, in the more recent videos that I've seen so far. Uh, right. it, you're a natural. I mean, that is, there is no doubt in that. And, um, you know, since you're talking about the music growing up, I'm wondering, like, what kind of artists, genre, were you into something more specific when you were little or, you know, growing up? How did that go? Were you more open minded? Just, you know, share. Talk away. <laughs> so, so in terms of what I loved listening to, um, I kind of had two schools of music here. There was stuff that I had to listen to because it was put on um if anyone's ever heard any religious Scientology music it is the worst <laughs> the worst um you know I work we're not going to play it today because honestly I don't need my day ruined like and that and also so, copyright <laughs> yeah absolutely um 
but yeah, some of those songs were awful. And I cannot stand ABBA. ABBA is ruined forever. I know it's controversial. So people are not going to like this. But, um, you know, ABBA was always on in our car and I could not stand it. Oh. But artists that I did like, I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> everyone leaves the chat. <laughs> it's over. Um, everyone writes Mama really... Me and leaves. <laughs> guys please don't please um yeah I I love listening to um a few different people from different kind of areas um Avril Lavigne was one of my favorites I had a little cd player and some of those over ear headphones you know it would stop every time you'd go over like a bump or something because <laughs> it was a cd um there's probably some people too young to know what that is and it makes me feel very old but yes Avril Lavigne I loved her she is a badass and an amazing amazing uh singer um i also have a soft spot in my heart for hillary duff she is a disney channel star yes. i love her <laughs> and she is just pure she is so pure and i love her yes i love um, her so much too <laughs> good okay I'm yes, not, I'm not yes. same, mate. um old old school though i liked a bit of old school too stevie wonder always i love stevie wonder songs i love the trumpets i just yeah it's a good time a good vibe um and so my grandparents would always play like um Ella Fitzgerald and and stuff like that so I have a bit of a soft spot for the kind of jazz oh, I standards love, I love and jazz and stuff yeah definitely so I probably did what about you who do you, what do you listen to I feel like we're on the same we're on the same vibe well, here. <laughs> gosh I don't even I'm, I'm, <laughs> these like simple questions sometimes are the hardest because you know when you were thinking about it just all these memories just keep bombarding like you know in the brain and then I don't even know, like, it's like everything and nothing. No, but I mean, I I don't think I listened to like one specific artist. Like, I don't think I was obsessed with one specific one. Um, but yeah, like definitely, you know, uh, Avril, um, Hilary Duff, Kelly Clarkson was a big one. I really loved ah. her. Break Away, like that song is like, oh, please. Yes, I want to break away. <laughs> Yeah, I feel um, you. I feel you. Yeah, and I mean the the um, the memory I have, like the most um, like music connected memory I have, is those magazines, like those you know magazines that were like super popular between among teenagers and, and and kids. They had like these last few pages that had lyrics of the most popular songs, and I remember cutting the the lyrics, and and reading it over and over and over to like memorize, and then be able to like sing along when I was listening to the radio. So like that's my best memory of that, and um, that's yeah, I don't know if you're, I don't know if this is too old for you, but like the tapes, like because there was no streaming and you know CDs and stuff and cassettes were like too expensive to buy like on a on a store. Uh, what a lot of people would do, uh, me included, would be to put like a virgin tape in the in like the radio. And then wait until your favorite mu music goes on and then press record and then you have it recorded in your own tape and then you keep doing that so that was like the that legal you allowed to yeah that was it's pirate <laughs> that was like the 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 way to do it so you could you know hear a playback of your your favorite songs nice <laughs> sort of so yeah um I'm wondering, like, is that still your go-to comfort music? You know, Hilary Duff, your music from childhood, is that the music you still go to for comfort nowadays? No, definitely not. I am, um, it's more nostalgic now, you know, like, I don't listen to it uh, of, of choice. Um, I really like, like, soul and, like, R&B kind of things. Um, there's, a, there's a band out there called Lawrence, who I absolutely love, like a brother and sister band, and they do these, like, funky soulful uh tracks and it just gets me like in a good mood you know if i'm on my way to work or something uh yeah it just gets me in like a proper proper good mood for the day um who else sammy ray is another good one uh, i'm obsessed with her she's amazing um yeah so i'd say like those i like kind of soul r&b funk neo um people like that so mm -hmm. yeah like we've graduated from hillary bless her oh. she will always have a place in my heart <laughs> yeah I mean I I really love Hillary and I actually watched I recently watched um I actually now that we're talking about this I think I stopped 
um, midway because I was falling asleep, but not because the documentary was bad. It was just because I was sleepy. <laughs> And I think I forgot to finish watching it, but it was a documentary about um, Hilary Duff and like her her whole experience in the music industry and how she's like one of the few, very few D Disney kids that um, kind of still, you know, it, it, it thrived and is still sort of, you know, thriving and didn't really make, um, there wasn't like much bad gossip and bad stuff about her um, except for that... Um, the fact that she was uh, uh, still a minor and dating uh, like a he was like 25 or 30 years old like at the time I don't know if you if you remember the like if you realize the age difference but I didn't I thought they were the same age I didn't realize he was yeah. so mature the no. the um, the guy from uh, Good Charlotte the band so I didn't know oh. yeah he was like Damn. apparently he they were. He was at least like 25 and she was uh, 17 or 16 or something like that. It was crazy. Yeah. Like now, yeah. nowadays. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. Yeah. She didn't do anything really to um, like damage her like Disney track record. Like I heard it could be a conspiracy theory, but um, that a lot of the like Disney stars, Miley Cyrus, things like that would uh, do things to break their Disney contract. That's why the Wrecking Ball Ooh. video came out. Yeah. Because then Disney would break the contract and no longer, you know, own them. But just a conspiracy theory. I think. Absolutely. I think it's <laughs> true. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at all because those contracts were strange, to say the least. Um, well, we have here, I'm going to look at some comments, meanwhile, because, you know, uh, there's people reacting to Kelly Clarkson. I mean, Denver Stevio is reacting to Kelly Clarkson. Um, I don't know if this is showing already on screen, but gosh, this is the, the big challenge. Oh, I know why it's not. Don't worry. It's here. <laughs> there it is. So, uh, Denver Stevio was talking about Kelly Clarkson and he said that he's actually hooked on Lawrence now as well. Yes. Yeah. I think I sent a track to him. Oh, um, yeah. I sent a track to the Steve Lawrence track and yeah, they are absolute bangers. Just if you need to get in a good mood quickly, get Lawrence oh, because it works. I'll, I'll be <laughs> honest. I have not listened to them ever. So I will definitely. Are they like more indie? I'll send you my playlist. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yeah. They are quite indie. They're not a like giant mainstream band, but they're very, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> So your co go co go to comfort music. You've already talked about that in your genres. That's pretty cool. Uh, so no Hillary Dove. What's yours? No, 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 no. What's yours? You got to answer these questions too. This is two way street, honey. <laughs> well, um, there's the guilty pleasure answer, and there's the um, the other answer, uh, <laughs> like <laughs> just the answer uh, that I would just socially say. Like the guilty pleasure would be like just the you know the the pop like just anything pop that makes me feel like you know like a like a woman you know like, like are you a eurovision fan no okay are you well it's kind of fun to watch i'll be honest there's a couple of tunes i like it for makes sure. me cringe too much i can't deal you gotta go to a eurovision party to kind of to get into it, I think mm. you go to an actual watch party. There's there's a vibe. It's fun. Okay, because sitting fun. at home it just makes me cringe a lot. So I, I can never really get into it. But I will try to go to a Eurovision party. They don't exist here, but you know, once I go to the UK, I'll make sure to schedule a trip right on Eurovision time and then go to a party. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> for sure <laughs> but um yeah so like the guilty pleasure would be you know ariana grande that kind of stuff that you just you listen to to that and you're like oh yeah like i feel like a dangerous woman you know you're like you know <laughs> i'm like lying down on the bed like pajamas it's a dangerous woman i'm feeling i feel that poise <laughs> um lethal honey but <laughs> i think my guilty pleasure is um RuPaul, anything RuPaul music, I love it from like Drag Race, right? RuPaul I is never his music. Honestly, you should. It's it's a vibe. Like I'm a big Drag Race fan. I love I love watching it, and 
they have the songs on every you know every episode um and it's a party and it's sassy and it's fun and yeah i recommend that everyone get a bit of rupaul in their life honey because it's great well you know what i think like we're we're just getting started with this stream and i'm already learning a lot um rupaul another thing to my list lawrence rupaul it's gonna be a crazy <laughs> crazy playlist <laughs> Um, we have here uh, Peggy, Happy Chaos Peggy, Hi, Peggy. telling uh, us that, um, I mean, telling me, it's okay, Jennifer, you can admit you love the Backstreet Boys. I do. I will admit. I love <laughs> the Backstreet Boys. I love Spice Girls. Um, I will still vibe to it any day. No problem at all. Um, although um, my guilty pleasure has been my playlist i made a playlist of um teen like music that i listened to in my teenage years which is like basically a lot of like emo music and like screamo music <laughs> like, oh yeah and that's what i listen to nowadays i think i went back like i hadn't listened to it in like 10 years more than 10 years and i went back and now i'm like yeah just listening to these like complete headbangers <laughs> Love it. You know, I have I have llamas, but I listen to headbangers, you know, we, we just like <laughs> we rock. Did you already have the llamas or did you get them for the llama thing? I got, I got them for the llama thing. <laughs> <laughs> they fell off the chair. I know. I have you have you named them at least? Um, no. Tra I should put like one should be called trauma and the other one should be called um <laughs> coping strategy. <laughs> Beautiful. I can't manage to put it like straight. They're, they're, they just don't want to co collaborate. Okay, whichever whichever falls first is trauma, and then whoever survives <laughs> is coping strategy. I guess that's right. That's very creative. Yes, let's do that. Um, well, Denver Stevio is uh, apparently singing along um, Spice Girls, and I can't read this without singing it. So. Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> so, yeah, um, guilty pleasures. And so, are you in? Are these guilty pleasures that you have and these comfort go to comfort music? Does it? Uh, is it what inspires you to make your own music, or not at all? No. Okay. What's the source no. of your inspiration? No, it's a strange question. It could be anything. It could be um, situation. It could be the weather. It could be, um, you know, a person. It could be some words I've heard. It could be it could be anything, I guess. Like life. There you go. Boom. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was a strange question, but that was a perfect answer. Wait, let me point to the right side. That, that was a perfect answer. <laughs> oh, it's this way for me, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, like, I, if we want to, if we want to do the fusion. Oh. I'm getting the reaction thing. I can do this, and then you have to do the other side to like do the fusion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, go back a little bit, closer to your face, closer to your face. Yeah, that's it. We're fusion. <laughs> You're gonna love the replay. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> so it looks so normal and tame in here. So I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. And like, I can just see everything. So I'm just cracking up, and you're like, like you're you're like all pretty and like correct, and I'm like. I'm like dying here. You're funny. That's what you are. <laughs> I'm just a weirdo. Um, so when you make music, do you like write the song first? Do you think about the, um, the rhythm, the instrumental track first? Is it a mix of everything? Um, is there a first? Is there a last? <laughs> Yeah, it can be. It can go either way, but usually I get like a little, like a little hook in my head or a little line or something, and it's usually got words. It's got the tune, and then I have to kind of figure it out after that. Um, yeah, but I am not no, I'm I'm not no professional songwriter. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> um, but no, I'm no, I'm no um, professional. I just yeah, it's something I've I've done for uh, my own mental health and stuff, you know. Um, and it's when I've been in sort of struggling situations, it's something that's helped me 
um, like process feelings that um, are hard to, to talk about, to express, um, you know, and they're kind of each, each one has been a way to, to deal with something like that, you know? Um, so I think for that reason, like it would, I would never go into the, that industry, you know, it's a very competitive, mm -hmm. um, be brutal and cutthroat and see, I'd have to be consistently in distress to make more music probably. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's, um, yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I only really write if I've, you know, if I'm needing to do, needing to do it, like, you know, it's hard for me to just pop one out unless, unless I'm doing parodies and rewriting lyrics to, uh, come after my trolls then you know that's inspiration gotta love know, your so. parodies I mean if you have not already check out uh Kelly Copter's parodies on her channel they are as I like to say creme de la creme they're just creme de la creme <laughs> I say that again, I don't know. Creme, creme de la that was creme, perfect creme. perfect Kelly <laughs> that was perfect um so, uh, do you remember the first song you wrote? <laughs> yes, I do remember the first song I wrote, and it's very cheesy and super lame. Um, it's called Lucky. <laughs> oh. How old were you? And the chorus. Uh, you know what? I was like, I was probably like 14. Like, you know, I, I didn't write them when I was like below 10, but that was the first one I was like, right, sat at piano, was like, okay, I've got my little riff. Oh. And the chorus, the chorus where it was like, I'm so damn lucky, so lucky to be so unlucky, because this story could not have been written any other way. It's so stupid. I want more. <laughs> Can you give us more? But it's very cheesy, very cheap, very Disney Channel, very cheesy. But you know what? It was the first one, and and I'm proud of it to this day. I mean, it's it's really. I I, I think that you can never have um, cre like art pieces and just art artistic stuff that you create in teenage years. It comes hand in hand with cheesy. I think it's very rare 100. and boring that, you know, to be a teenager and not do cheesy stuff and not write cheesy stuff. Just, you know, we need cheesy. We need cheese and we need cheesy too. <laughs> we need to tell everyone that you don't understand us, okay? Yeah, like people, if people want to say it's cheesy, <laughs> they say that because they just, they're too normal, you know? Cheesy is cool, you know? <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of, um, I told you that I was going to share with you one of my first poems. Um, so you don't feel, yes. so you don't feel so ooh, about sharing your stuff too. So I'll do that. But I also like in my head, like when I look at it, I'm like, oh, that was so not, not cheesy, but like, it's so, oh, you know, I, it makes me cringe a bit, but then um, one thing, and this is a, a practice that I, I um, recommend everybody to do when they're looking back at things that they created or did and they're kind of ashamed or whatever, is to be compassionate about that person. Have empathy to that person that you were when you wrote that or when you did that. Because if, you're, if you had a friend that showed you that, the, the thing they made, and that was the thing they made, you wouldn't say, hey, that's cheesy that's really bad. That's cringe. I mean, if you, if you would say that, it would be a bad friend. So I don't no, think, I you think would that's say, really you know? good advice. Um, and we were talking about yeah. this the other yeah, day and you good. told me like, be the, be the voice, be, be the friendly voice that you would be to, to yourself. Like you told me this and it's true. Like we need to be friendly with ourselves because we're so, it's so easy to be our worst critics, you know? So. Yeah, well, we already know, unfortunately, that what that sounds like. Um, lots of us that have, have dealt with um, people that have, have hurt us or upset us in our lives or narcissists like you have dealt with, yes. you know. Um, you, you already know what that voice sounds like, you know. Um, so it's really easy to personify that and to make it very real because it already has been very real to you. So, um, you know, I... I uh, think it's really hard to to uh, get over that or, you know, ignore it. It's, you know, even for me, it's still there. Like, it doesn't go away, but you can, like you just said, you know, 
um, talk to yourself as if you were a friend, you know, a friend, how you would talk to your friends. And you would never treat your friends the way that, um, you know, you, you talk to yourself in that negative voice. Sorry, I distracted myself because of the two llamas poking out of your head like this. <laughs> It just got me off and made me giggle. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, I think that's great. Please show me the poem, uh, please. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to read it, okay. <clears throat> Gosh, I didn't know if it would be so uncomfortable doing it. <laughs> take a moment. No, you take a moment. Be still. Okay, so... Um, okay. Uh, full disclosure, I was uh, 11 or 12 when I wrote this. Okay, guys? Um, so, uh, how can you explain the way people think? How can you not feel the pain when people drop the ink? These people are so cruel, they do not have a heart. They are never in a good mood, their feelings fall apart. They are the darkness, much darker than the night. They are so very careless, they never saw the light. But sometimes you may believe that the real problem is you, and that there is no need to stop, think, and see if it's true. And there are so many ways of trying to find a point. Writing this so many days, but this is not worth a coin. You wrote that when you were 11? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good. It's, it's cr- very deep. It's, cr- it's deep. It's cringe. It's not cringe. No, what did we just say? Oh, what did we just it's say, It's lovely. Um, Jen. It is. The 11-year-old Jennifer. It is lovely. That poem is 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 a poem that expresses deep feelings of childhood trauma. Do not be uh, ashamed of writing that. <laughs> exactly. And that's I think that's really good. Like it makes sense. It rhymes. It's a bit sad and I'm really sorry that that's how you were feeling <laughs> when you wrote it. But fair play to you. Like, you know, you've got a creative creative little brain i love it <laughs> thanks for sharing it thank you everyone the... everyone who's in the chat right now put like hearts in there for jen oh, for gosh. sharing that because <laughs> it's awesome i mean i really liked your lucky one i love that your first song was called lucky that's really cute and the, you know the lyrics are so cute as well so you know um and but you had like song and instrumentals this is just a poem it's just letters there's no like you know, complex stuff, like the stuff you do. I think I think you could bring it back and turn that into a rap. I mean it. You could do it, oh. get some sick beats on it, and just spit those bars, and it will be, it will slap 10 out of 10. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, I was thinking about, <laughs> about writing a rap. This video, gets, <laughs> this video gets a thousand likes, Jen will do it as a rap. This video will not even get... A hundred likes. One thousand likes make it happen, people. <laughs> we'll get the rap. It's gonna be awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. If it ever if it ever in um one decade gets a thousand likes, I'll be here at forty years old. Beep 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 mini <laughs> It's a promise. <laughs> so I think since we're talking about music and making music and being creative, and I think everybody just wants to hear you do some music. Everybody wants to hear that. So I think this is a great time to share one of your um, videos of music I that I picked. What, oh, I don't, oh, I don't even know what it's going to be. I, didn't I am. Shit. I can't see anything in obviously in this backstage bit. So should I like load it up sure. on here so I know what you're doing? Yeah, sure. Okay, I can do that. You can go I ahead and do it. I loved it me... so much. I really loved it. So guys, be ready. I'm scared now. Because <laughs> this is Kellycopter exclusive, amazing music where she is playing different instruments and singing and She's just so cool. Like, you guys need to see this. She's just so, 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 so cool. So, let's go. Oh, hello there. Would it be okay if I ask you your name? Or should I be ashamed? If I 
ask you your name? That's the rules of the game But I don't want to be lame Thinking about you Thinking about you But am I allowed to? That's all I got to say. We're back. We're back. I was just vibing with these, you know, like. You were dancing great back there. Thank you. I did not think you were going to pick that one. That's so funny. I I literally, that's Lawrence, by the way. That song is by Lawrence. Oh, um, that's cool. That yes, actually. Um, <laughs> yes. Their song is, their actual song is much better than what I did to it, but. Um, you know, it was fun. It was like locked down, and I was like, "We can see if we could do some looping or something, and you know, acapella it up and try and build it." Because there wasn't a track for it at the time, and I wanted to sing it, even though it is far too high for me. But you know, is what it is. No, it's <laughs> it's great. It's great, and we have here reactions like, "Holy hell, Copterhead!" 
uh, Denver Stevie. <laughs> I was going to say that's definitely Stevo. <laughs> and M said, yet Kelly would will sit in our flat and say she is not a singer. Girl can sing. That's in caps lock. I stand by it. <laughs> uh, I agree, Em. I stand agree. Really, make this girl <laughs> sing. Like if <laughs> um, Peggy said, "Oh my God, that was so amazing, Kelly." I agree. I agree. Well, thank you guys. Awesome. It's it's, it's all right. It was fun. That's what I mean. It was fun. You know. You know. But... If um, you were my roommate, I would um, while you're sleeping, I would grab a bag, put on top of your head. Grab some people to help me drag you, drag you on a stage, and then take off the, the thing on the head, and then you wake up and, like, you have that, you know, you have a mic in front of you, and you can only go back to bed when you, when you that sing. That uh, <laughs> fun. <laughs> um, we also have here, um, ha- I, I hope I pronounced this right, Hans Christian Schwartz saying, Amazing Kelly. Yes. Oh, thank you. And hello. Hope hope you're doing all right. <laughs> yeah, and it is. I mean, I absolutely love your music, your voice, your presence. Just I think that, you know, um you're natural. Thanks, mate. And uh, thank you. I yeah. Well, I I really appreciate that. Like I love to do it and, you know, I will continue to, but I just yeah, I um I think like you said, we're all our own worst critics for sure um you know so like i i know you were playing that i didn't even have the volume on i was just like i don't know what this sounds like oh, we'll just, we'll just no. do it <laughs> yeah um you know so yeah we're all our own worst critics for sure um but i it, have so much joy get so much joy out of doing it um and i think you should always do that no matter you know what the sort of judgments are like if you love to dance you're not a professional you know salsa or whatever the term is you know you should still do it because you enjoy it and that that's what I kind of um that's why that stuff is up there because you know um it's something that gives me great joy so I just even though it's not perfect I'm so sure some people will go "Mm, that was a bit that was a bit off but guess what (laughs) I don't care (laughs) I just want to say that your singing and your your playing and just in general that is not amateur shit. That is the real shit. Okay? So do not compare yourself to an amateur. No, 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 no. That's the real shit. It's the real shit, people. <laughs> and you can buy that t-shirt at uh, com. <laughs> not yet. We'll get you a merch, though. <laughs> um, so, um, if you uh were to um you know not be just a a shower singer i guess i'm gonna call you now because that's what you want to be a shower singer um and if you actually had a (laughs) hypothetical uh professional music career where would be the place you would like to perform solo there would be a place where you'd be like yeah that's the place hmm glastonbury probably because it's a, it's a big festival mm. um, here in the UK for anyone that doesn't know. Very <laughs> iconic, um, lots of vibes, good times. And I think if you could, if you get a spot of glass to breathe then you've nailed it pretty much. Um, yeah, so I would say that. Yeah, um, I think. But I would, I've already, I've already done my dream gig. Like I literally have done it already. Where, so. where was it? Where was it? So um, it, was a, it was like nine years ago now, but um, with my um, school, a bunch of my friends, um, we did something called the uh, Music for Youth Schools Proms. And it's done at the Royal Albert Hall in London, oh. um, which if you guys know the proms, you will have seen it there. Um, and we did. It's very funny considering my channel, but we did this Book of Mormon like thing. And um and it was awesome. It was so much fun. We were all dressed as Mormons doing like, hello, my name is all this stuff. It was so funny. And um, doing it on the Royal Albert Hall stage, it was the most amazing gig ever. We were all so scared, you know, um, but we were all, I was with my friends, you know, and we did this whole big thing in this huge venue. It was insane. And honestly, one of my favorite, favorite things ever that, that I've ever done. 
So I feel like I've already pe- I peaked too soon. And, it, you know, it's all downhill from here, really. <laughs> no, because that was a group performance. You will peak. Uh, you shall peak solo, too. Your time is going to come. Thank and you. there's I think I'm better in a group, though, like. In a, in a singing group because it's not on my own you know if I if I mess up I'm kind of like oh there's other people to look at it's fine <laughs> Kelly two things one it's okay to sing on your own because you're great number two you will not mess up because you're great okay believe in yourself many a time. okay do you have people here believe in yourself <laughs> Believe in yourself. See? Believe in yourself. <laughs> See, that was- me, me and some of my friends, we play this game where we try and sing as like out of tune as possible. So it would be like, <clears throat> believe in yourself. We would just we just do that. And it's really fun. Like, if you've never tried just purposely singing really bad, it's the best thing. Oh, <laughs> it's really enjoyable. I, I don't even need to try to purposely sing bad. I just, I have to try to not sing bad. <laughs> I just purposely, naturally sing bad. Okay, lies. I've seen your Instagram. You can sing. So do not even try it on me, honey. Honey bee. Mm, it's not going to work. <laughs> I don't know. I hope you've got something to show in this situation. I, mean, I hope you've got a video I, I, to pull up. I, I do, but because uh, like you asked me and I didn't want to like, you know, uh, be like, put all eyes on you and, and make you feel like super, okay, she didn't share anything of hers and I asked her, so like, that's not very empathetic of her. Uh, <laughs> so I I brought something, yes, but now I want to focus on these amazing comments because you already have performance <laughs> invites here so you have marilyn <laughs> marilyn inviting you to perform in vermont nice i would totally do that her um, her kids are um they have a band and they're really really good she up- she uploaded a video of them yesterday mm-hmm. doing this like drunken sailor cover thing and it was really good and really good guitarist as well so um yeah guys check that out for sure and yeah i'll come and i'll join the band I'll join the band in Vermont. I'd love to. (laughs) I mean, I would not mind being your personal assistant because I would love to visit Vermont. So, I mean, you know, I'll I'll carry your bags and your instruments, you know, like I'll be (laughs) with your little calendar. Um, Miss uh, Kelly, you have a performance at 6 p.m. on the blah, blah, blah venue in Vermont. I know you have in the other blah, blah, blah venue. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so um joe duceppo said if we're doing invites come and sing with me while i play oh cool yeah um i don't know if you know joe uh, jen. yes i oh, actually jen. subscribed to her recently and i love her channel i love everything like um i don't know what the handle is but if someone has it pull it up joe duceppo i think, I think joe... it's at joe duceppo okay yeah, so at joe duceppo uh, she makes instruments. <sighs> yeah, yeah, they're really cool as well. They're really I beautiful. Know. Like I saw it, I was like, "Wow!" Like this is so cool. Like that, there's people here on YouTube that are so underrated and making so much cool stuff. Um, yeah, I saw it. I I really I really liked her stuff, and uh, yeah, I could see that. I could see you singing along one of those funky. Um, the loop? Yeah, like, that's so cool. I, I, really <laughs> I could see that. You'd have to play though. I'm not very good at playing. Literally, I can play like four chords on a guitar and that's about it. So if it's in G, I can play it. But if it's in any other key, no chance. <laughs> that's how That's how you tell apart a pro, a pro from a non-pro is that you're saying like all these letters and I'm like, okay, so we're back to English literature class here. And you're like, oh, G, F, E minor, F major. You play the guitar. So what? Why are you mess? Like, I, it, it, you mess. I look at the letter. Like, I look at the stuff, and I see where I have to put my fingers. And then I just put my fingers where the paper, sa- where the like the list says, put your fingers here, put your fingers there, put your fingers there. And I do that, and that's it. Like, I don't really actually associate it with like a major or minor or whatever. <laughs> I do it sounds right. Mm-hmm. It sounds mm-hmm. good. I don't know. I'm serious. You guys are going to see her play something in a minute and you're going to be like, 
this she lies she knows she knows that's what they're gonna say i'm gonna distract from that <laughs> by saying that m is saying that there is an amp and mic upstairs kelly it's dream karaoke time <laughs> Honestly, we do, me and Em, Em is an amazing singer, by the way. She's in this show called The Twelve Tenors at the moment, which is like touring or in, in Europe, which is cool as hell. And he can sing like Whitney Houston and stuff. It's insane. I'm like, you know, he can pop out. I want to dance with somebody. And I'm like, it's too high. I can't <laughs> sing that. Um, but me and him will like do karaoke sometimes together and just like bash out some harmonies and stuff and it's so fun he's so fun to sing with yeah um he is a professional that is he is a paid professional honey he's very good yeah i actually saw because he was in the same um game night uh from your channel when you did the game night the werewolves game night and was there and then you know i follow subscribed everybody including him and then i saw like his instagram and i saw this thing and i was like okay excuse me like okay <laughs> that's the real deal man <laughs> yeah so honestly check him out he's he's um he's amazing and yeah love hearing him sing yeah so, so... get on the ground people so you're really not gonna stop talking about <laughs> he's saying shoot not about me it's not about him now now it's about kelly he wants us to talk about why, you. Why, why? What did he say? Because uh, you're, you know, you're you're advertising him, and he's saying this chat oh. is not about <laughs> him. It's about you. So you're really not going to leave me alone until like I share my little thingy thing. With, with yes, correct. Oh God, Ugh, I'm just going to rip the bandaid because it's very short, and and, and um. This is not going to be a good okay, idea. Okay, 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 before you do it, before you do it, before you do it, you're not allowed to undersell it. What? Why? You just have to be like, you just have to be like, look, this is the song I made. Here it is. Oh, I, I didn't epic. make the song. I didn't make the song. Like, big it up. <laughs> I dare you. Big it up. It's Come on. It's a cover, and it's not great, and I just have to say, my hair looks chaotic. Chaotic in that video. Okay, guys? Um... Yeah, uh, I, I guess I'm just gonna do it. Like, wow, I'm gonna mute it too. <laughs> Three, two, I'm one. Um, oh gosh. I just took a DNA test. Turns out I'm a hundred percent that bitch. Even when I'm crying crazy, yeah, I got. Boy problems, there's a human in me Bling bling, then I saw him, that's a goddess of me Could have had a bad bitch, non-committal Help you with your career, just a little Supposed to hold me down, but you're holding me back And that's the sound of me not calling you back White man great till they gotta be great Don't text me, tell it straight to my face Best friend sat me down in the salon chair Shampoo Excuse me. You're a hundred percent that bitch, honey. Sorry, I live. Guys. It's so good. I'm sorry, guys. That was not. It's so good. <laughs> That's just. Do not shake your head. I want to hear no more nonsense from you. <laughs> it's not good, guys. <laughs> Emma's being nice. He's. He just said yes, Jen. That tone. You're being very nice, yes. Em, okay? Thank you for that. I love it. You need to get the whole song and put it on put it on your channel because it's a bop. <laughs> I'm just doing a DNA test powder. I'm a hood person. That <laughs> bitch. Yes, you are. Yes, you oh are. <laughs> I feel like it's very weird for me to show the comments that talk about me. <laughs> But, yeah, okay. you know, I can I can't um, show them, but I can I can read them. We stand a cheeky growl, says M. Um Marilyn says you're amazing, Jen, with a little star. Um I said Queen, because you are. 
Um, Joe DiCepa says, I'd seen Kelly's amazing stuff before, but this is new to me. Wow, Jen. Uh, Jen, that was amazing. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. There you go, man. You are. Oh my killing. god! Get these. Th- get them uploaded. Do it. No. If this video gets a thousand likes, <laughs> Jen will upload the full version to, get a to, likes to YouTube. Now. Oh my god! I'm so embarrassed. I just need to like leave. So the rest of the show will be with the llamas. Hello there. So, Kelly, what do you want to say about music? Yeah, what do you want to say? <laughs> Just make it... You know, the voices were quite good then. You could do a puppet show. I would love to do a puppet show. <laughs> Actually, that would be like dream career. I could like me. duck down and then bring up, bring up the potato. Oh, oh yes, yes, I listen to it. Hello, that a potato. What's up? How are you doing, man? What's up, llama? What's going on? So, I see that you're looking really good and really brown. I'm as white as snow. How did you get that color? It's a potato. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I okay, and then, no, this is why we can't have nice things, Jen, okay? <laughs> I thought you were going to say something like, it went to the tanning salon. I quit. I quit. I quit. <laughs> no, the potato deserves more love than that. Um, by the way, I want to talk about the potato. Uh, for those who don't know, who made oh. the potato? Uh, it's Marilyn. Marilyn from Coffee, Cults, and Crafts. She made this beautiful potato that... <laughs> it sounds so funny saying that. I'm going to give you a full... She made this... A full... Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> I love all her curves. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming her gender, but uh, I mean, she's a potato. So if it was a guy with a potato, I guess. Patricia. She's, she's a girl. Her name is Patricia. Patricia the potato. Okay. So she's yeah. a, okay. So, um, she is beautiful. Squishy. Love her curves. Love her skin texture. <laughs> beautiful potato made by Marilyn Honig from Coffee Cults and Crafts. She makes a lot of adorable, adorable, cute stuff like that potato. Potato. Sorry. Sorry. Potato. She's yeah. beautiful. That potato. I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> Look, but there, this one matches more with the potato, though. Brother. Brother potato. Yeah. Sister. Sister potato. Patricia. Is that you? It's brown. You can't really see because there's like the light hitting on it. But like, it's brown. You're laughing at the sister. I, <laughs> I wasn't ready for a puppet show today, you know. I just wasn't. I didn't know that was what was happening. I didn't plan it. It's just an impromptu puppet show. <laughs> puppet shows are cute, you know. Cheers to everyone. Cheers to everyone for that's here for the puppet show. <laughs> uh, we thank you um, for spending your time with us and our friends. <laughs> um, Peggy said the potato wears brown so well her lips are Maybelline <laughs> okay beautiful I guess <laughs> so it's not maybe it's Maybelline it's surely it's Maybelline <laughs> oh my god um, I am not like drunk or anything this is just me normal n- n- normal me like people um, we're living at the moment. People don't understand smiling people because everybody's depressed here. So, um, I used to get this all the time in public. Like, what are you smoking, girl? And I'm like, uh, I'm smoking life. Like, I don't need no, <laughs> I need no drugs. <laughs> you know, like. High on life. Just high on life. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, so um, I love the potato. And I think, you know, puppet show, that could be a thing. That could be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I meant to ask you, because I just assumed that you were a shower singer earlier. And I really want to know, are you a shower singer? 
Sometimes. Sometimes I'm a shower yeah. singer. Not every shower when? is a singing moment. Why? Usually when usually when there's nobody in the house. But that not always. Um and it depends what kind of situation we're in. Is it like a you know, like a casual shower, like get dressed, get ready, or is it like a I've got like half an hour to get showered and get out of this house. If that's the situation, there ain't no singing going on. There's not like a you know it's, fast it's forward music. Efficiency. Like, oh, I want to dance with somebody. No. Ooh, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> no, absolutely not. We either, we're either jamming or we're not jamming. If I'm if I'm in a rush, there there will be no singing whatsoever. <laughs> but yeah. everyone sounds better in the shower. I think that's what it is because of the acoustics of the sound bouncing around on the tiles and stuff. So I get I get the shower vibes Wait, for sure it, but I, you know what I, you know what i do sing i sing when i'm like cooking or something when you're cocaine <laughs> cooking not cocaine <laughs> someone's gonna clip that <laughs> <laughs> so um you you sing when you're cooking and you don't sing when you're in a cooking uh, cooking <laughs> yeah <laughs> cooking <laughs> or cleaning or cleaning um and yeah, another good quick showers no singing no what about you always pretty much always shower singer every every shower pretty much and if i'm not singing like out loud my head is definitely thinking of a song hmm. what's your go-to shower singing song <sighs> So, uh, no, I can't think of, like, what what is it? I mean, Spice Girls is always good, you know? Wanna be, if you wanna be, man. Like, that's always, like, obviously. And then, um, well, uh, blah, 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 blah. I love uh, Amy Winehouse for shower singing. Yes. That's yeah. That's a good one. And um, I love, um, the, it's this French uh, singer, um, I don't want to say her name wrong, Indila, wait, I don't know if it, that's, um, I'm going to just confirm here, because I, I always know her name, and then, you know, yeah, Indila, yeah, um, she has this song called uh, Dernière Danse, which is like the last dance, and uh, I, I really like that song. That's so fancy. <laughs> No, she's like really like she's a pop-ish singer and she's quite famous like in French speaking countries and stuff and I don't know, I, I really like that song in specific. I just think it I so basically, I don't uh, I'm going to be honest. It's less about the song and more about how I sound. <laughs> it's so the song's conceited but it's not. I cannot sing that song when I'm not in the shower because of the shower acoustics uh, so that's my got it, only got chance you need, you need the atmosphere i got one shot mm. one opportunity <laughs> so <laughs> gonna seize the moment <laughs> we have someone saying here um call me maybe stuck in my head for days yeah Hey, oh, and well, now it's you. gonna be stuck in my head. Whoever crazy. you are, who said that? Uh, Peggy. <laughs> Peggy, gonna be stuck in my head now too. Cat. I think me and Carly Rae Jepsen have the same birthday as well. Randomly, I think oh, so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she has the same. On Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> are you a big Carly Rae no, fan? But you know, it always sounds cool to say that. It's like you know the artist. I did wish her happy birthday. No, I just Googled it. You know when you're like famous birthdays just to see who has the same one as you? <laughs> I actually don't know. Yeah, you got it. Wait, wait when, when's your birthday? I can uh, tell you. September 20th. Okay. Yes, I'm a Virgo for whoever is like trying to check the astrology thing. Uh, yes, Virgo perfectionist, da da da. Perfect, basically. Yes, that's me. Okay, let's see who has your birthday. Um... Julia Roberts, right? That's yeah. pretty good. Um, Demi Moore, Rachel McAdams, Robert Downey Jr. You got some good people. Mm. Who else? I mean, that was pretty. That was already pretty good. I mean, you know. 
smashed it. I mean, mate. that's Iron it. Man, right? Celebrity birthday. Yeah. <laughs> what else do I want? Where do you go from here? Like, it's perfect. <laughs> um, Peggy said she shares a birthday with Alice Cooper. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> spooky. <laughs> Rock and roll. You said spooky, so you and I tried to give it a little. You got you nailed it, mate. You nailed it. Oh, <laughs> Marilyn is is talking about John Bon Jovi. She wrote, "We're halfway there, living on a prayer." That was my era. John Bon Jovi. Yes, I went to his high school. Actually. Yeah, no I studied in his high school. Uh, it's Sayreville. Pretty cool. It's in Sayreville War Memorial High School. It's a li- it's a it's yeah. a town. It's a friendly little town in New Jersey where I was, um, where I spent all my high school years, basically. Yeah, he's from. Uh, yeah. Speaking of school, congratulations on graduating, honey. What the oh hell? Oh, God. Get you. No, it's nothing. Tell it's... the people. Tell the people if they oh, don't know. No, I don't... <laughs> I don't like... Yeah. I don't like showing off that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> How long you study for? Like four years? Like, come on. You mean like total, like f- since, the be- since the beginning of. For the. For the for the qualification, how long did you t- how long did you have to study for it? Uh, for officially, uh, six, six unofficially. Because I st- yeah, six. like I started the project in two thousand sixteen. Like so, uh, yeah, yeah. So I finished uh, my um, PhD degree. <laughs> it sounds very really weird saying it out loud. It's so cool. It's yeah. awesome. You should be so proud of yourself, mate. So proud of yourself. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not going to use, like, the title. Like, I know some people like using it, like, on everywhere, like, social media, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to use, like, doctor behind my name. I just, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm a person. I'm a person like everybody. Like, it's not, you know, some people have degrees. Some people don't have the degrees. It's not an indicator of intelligence. It's just, uh, it's just just college like I know plenty so I know plenty of people that have PhDs and um they're they're just book smart like you put them in the streets and they they ain't street smart honey <laughs> well if this video gets a thousand likes and your rap comes out your rap name Jen right <laughs> Actually, I've been wa- speaking of this and speaking of music because this is the whole theme of our of our stream. Um, I've been watching the hip hop uh, evolution um, documentary. I'm loving it. And they were there was when I was there they were talking about uh, Dr. Dre, and then, and then I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if he has a PhD. Does he? I don't think so. And then I took it once st- because he's his doctor. I took it one step forward. I was like, I wonder if Dr. Seuss has a PhD. <laughs> then I just started going like everybody that I know as doctors like, did they have a PhD? And did they? What did your findings? I I didn't actually uh, look Dolan. um because oh. you know, I, I just thought I I was like I had that fleeting thought and then I was like, oh my god, it's <laughs> You're so pathetic. Just... Well, whether they have one or not, you do, oh, and you should be super proud of yourself. Oh gosh! Honestly, thank congrats! You, thank it's you. amazing. Thank you. It's really, really cool. So I'm gonna be like super formal about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about something else, cause like you know, I don't like, uh, you know. <laughs> but I do have to say that because I finished. And because I'm no longer, um, you know, wor- working directly with um, with this academic institution, I am finally free to reveal a lot of stories. Nicola, That's my cat's food. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a second. Nicola, <laughs> you know the sound. You remember this Nicola, from the interview? I know. I know. Let the beat drop. <laughs> 
that's what's going in your app. You gotta add it. You gotta get that sound effect going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll include that in my rap if I get a thousand likes in this video. <laughs> Gosh. So what was I saying? I totally forgot my train of thought. Um we were talking about famous birthdays, your PhD. Well, I don't know. We got we got sidetracked and it's completely complete. my fault. No, no, it's also my fault. <laughs> Uh, oh, Denver Stevio said that he thinks Dr. Seuss has an honorary PhD. He has an Fair. honorary doctorate from Dartmouth. Dartmouth? Dartmouth? Oh my god. How do we pronounce Dartmouth? this? Yeah, I guess. I'm gonna guess Dartmouth. Okay, yeah, that's... Uh, um, Kelly pronounced it good. Listen to Kelly. <laughs> Dartmouth. Uh, Dartmouth, oh, darling. I don't know what I was saying. I was saying that finally uh, I can talk about, uh, I will be able to share a lot of stories and the, a lot of dark stories about the academic world and about narcissism in the workplace. So that's going to be Ooh, a thing I'm going to start cool. as well on my channel because I know that a lot of people have been requesting talking about not only family, uh, friendships, romantic relationships, narcissism, but uh, in the workplace as well because... More and more, we see people speaking out about a lot of stuff that goes on in the workplace. And um, yeah, we need to raise awareness for this, these things. And I'm going to finally be able to speak about it. And uh, teaser, teaser, it is not pretty. <laughs> wow. That sounds so exciting. I'm excited to yeah, see it. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited because I've had my eyes on that prize. I saw it as a prize. Like, I'm going to just finish this stuff. I'm going to, like, finish writing this thesis, finish this whole thing and survive through it because after I finish this, these people are going to get called out. Because, you know, I mean, there are people that are... <laughs> With this sweet little smile at the end, like... <laughs> <laughs> but you know because I think it's really important because um, uh, these are people that will still be there in 5, 10, 20 years if no one says anything if no one actually points the finger and starts talking you know and uh, someone needs to like you know start talking about stuff you know um, in that well, specific I'm here for yeah. it. so that'll be that'll be really exciting um, so yeah, but what I want to know, because we are talking, yes, go ahead. Subscribe. Mm? I was just doing a subscribe. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe to Kelly Copter. <laughs> Why do you sound like Dracula? What, what are you doing? I, don't, I mean, I was trying to make like a sexy voice. <laughs> Did that not work? It was very... It was giving ASMR realness. Ooh, okay. I, I was trying to be like, you know, like a little sexy, like, you know, that little... Yeah, ASMR is like that. It's like... We're streaming live. We can't cut this. I, I know. I'm sorry, guys. No. This is why I don't do live. No, you're great <laughs> live. I'm just, I'm the wreck here. <laughs> you do not lose your composure. I'm the one who's like throwing some llamas in the floor. <laughs> throwing coke. Hey, if I had a llama, I'd throw it too, okay? <laughs> why? They don't deserve it. I'm not doing it on purpose. It's just an accident. <laughs> this is my room, by the way, if anyone doesn't know. Like, I've never I've never filmed from down here before, but well, it was kind of it look, kind of a cool. It looks nice. You know, Honestly, kind of match your vibe. Yeah, I mean, I'm wearing like That's the vibe of your background. I'm wearing a onesie. If I, anyone is wondering, like literally, no one in the world is wondering if I'm wearing a onesie. But I'm like, I'm gonna show it off, guys. I'm gonna show. I have got like this is like a it's like a dressing gown. You know what? I don't really have like PJs. I just sleep in like old t-shirts, and you know, I don't really have like cute PJs, but. I have this like little robe, so I thought I'll oh, I'll wear my little robe and come out like a little nan and do my thing. You know. <laughs> someone asked if I'm gonna. Someone said that they think I'm gonna pee. I think Jen is going to pee. Um, I mean, I I, <laughs> I usually would need a pee break, but I'm okay. 
Thank you for the concern, though, my mod Peggy. We have yeah. Peggy mo uh, moderating today. <laughs> Thank you for the pee break. Um, Maya said, call the doctor, please, and get her act together. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> um, and uh, Denver Stevio is asking about the cat. Where is the cat? So there's one. Probably having food, yeah, no? Eating and um, sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not... <laughs> so Peggy's saying she's not acting very doctorish. I'm sorry. It's true. I'm not. And what is a doctor supposed to act you know, like? Not laugh, be serious, boring all the time. <laughs> <laughs> not sing, not rap. <laughs> 1,000 likes. Come on, people. We can do it. <laughs> okay, so I want to know. I'm going to go back to music now because I'm very curious about a lot of stuff um, about you and music. So one musician, dead or alive, you wish you could meet. My answer is going to be controversial for this. Okay. My I answer like is my answer is Michael Jackson. Now, before everyone jumps off at me and says, how dare you? Listen, I want to ask him some questions, you know, and just get the truth of what went down. Because even though I think, you know what, he probably did do the things that people said he did. This documentary came out after he died when he couldn't even speak for himself. Um, and he made some of the most incredible music ever. Um, so I would like to ask him a few questions mm -hmm. is, is the reason for me wanting to meet him, potentially. So you have one card. You can bring anyone, anyone back from the dead to talk to them, to just, you know, have a, you know, a, a singing battle with them, something like that. And you are picking Michael Jackson to ask him some questions about something non-music related? Yeah. That was your question was who which musician would you bring back? Right, but you know that, that not for a singing battle. That's for, really lovely. For... That's very um, selfless of you because you want to ask these questions to also you know world justice. You're not doing just. We need the truth. Yeah. We deserve the truth. That that's really cool. I don't have. Who would you bring back? Oh, um. Mm. Oh, I'm I'm gonna be like super deep about it. If I could bring back, Do it. like, so I I'm, I know I'm the one to make the question, but I'm not the one who's gonna make the rules. Uh, do we, can we bring the person back and they can just stay alive? Because that would be the point here. Well, yeah, it'd be a bit sad if they were like, well, we had our hour. <laughs> Guess I'll go back to being dead now. <laughs> yeah, they can live. Okay, so I would bring back Christina Grimmy. Oh, yes. You know? Absolutely. Uh, for yeah. those who don't know who Christi Christina Grimmy is, she was uh, an awesome singer. She uh, passed away super young. Um, she started on YouTube, actually. She was very, very popular. She had a very big fan base on YouTube and everything. Started her music career, did a lot of shows. She would do a lot of meet and greets. And then, unfortunately, she passed away in one of those meet and greets because one um one I don't even want to say fan just one one person lost their mind and decided it would be a great idea to go with a gun to the meet and greet and shoot her right in the face basically so that's it, it, it was really sad, so sad. It, I don't know it's, it's been a lot of I think it's been almost 10 years or it's been 10 years already uh, it feels like it was yeah. yesterday, honestly. Um, but I, I really liked her music. This was in 2016. Okay, so it's not been 10 years yet. Seven? Seven? Was seven? Yeah. No. Seven. I, I mean, I don't, have a, no. I don't have a degree in math, so. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> I think it's seven. Yeah, um, no, that story is so, so sad. If you guys don't know about it, do go look it up. Yeah, it's cr crazy. Christina Grimmie. Um, really, really. Yeah. And, 
good um, artist. Like, I loved her songs. Like, she had such a great vibe. And she had just released, like, she had um, released one song that was, go that was um, like, the soundtrack for a... Uh, I don't know if it was, like, Netflix, but for, like, a, a movie or something. So that was, like, her big, big gig that she was starting. And it was, um, it's just, yeah, it was really something. Like, I we haven't heard of her for a long time in the, um, just in the scene generally. But uh, she's... Oh. My camera just switched over for no oh. apparent reason. Okay. Well, then there's really definitely something that's haunted in that and house. And my headphone just fell out at the same time. Someone, someone was saying your headphone was blinking a bit ago. Oh, they always do. Look, you can see it through, <laughs> through my hair. It blinks. Here we are. That's weird, though. My it camera flipped. never dies like that. That was odd. Oh, wait. So now you're using your phone? No, I'm on my laptop. So I'm using my just laptop webcam. Whoa, it's so different. I mean, it still yeah. looks great. I mean, you still look great, <laughs> but <laughs> but yes. yeah, it's very different vibe. Um, yes. you were yes. talking about degree. You don't have a degree in maths, no, but you have a degree in. Tell us. <laughs> I have a degree in musical theater, which is hardly a degree, <laughs> but it's why? Um, well, listen. No, actually, that's unfair. I don't want to actually diss people that you know do have a degree in musical theatre. I think there are lots of more difficult degrees to do. Um, it's mostly performance based, which is awesome. Um, uh, but yeah, it, I don't think it's like a it's not like a doctor thing or anything like that. You know, it's um, a way to kind of get into um, you know into audition rooms and stuff, um, which I thought I wanted to do originally. And then I went to um, uni and did the musical theatre stuff. And I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> you know, so I kind of, um, I'm grateful to have a degree. It's nice to have, but, um, you know, it's not something I actually want to do as a job because it's, again, way too competitive. I, I hate the idea of auditioning for stuff and being rejected over and over again. Like, it sounds horrible. <laughs> You know, so, um, yeah, I choose not to kind of do that. Yeah. Uh, Peggy's saying performing performing arts degree. Sorry. Performing arts degrees are important. And I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. No, you're right. I take it back. I retract no, what I, I get, said. I get, I, I I get what you said. I, I get what you <laughs> meant. Like you're, because like you already, you have that tendency to like downplay your achievements uh, to, oh my gosh, you're gone. Kelly, where are you? You're I'm back. Here. You're back. Okay, because your camera, like you, you kind of, uh, um, got like chopped. <laughs> but we're bringing you back. Okay, do not worry. Have no fear. You are being brought back. Oh, this is gonna look great in the replay. This is gonna look amazing. So you are back. Okay. So I know what you meant. You were like downplaying your your achievement, and then yeah, I know yeah. I know what you mean. I don't want to down. I don't. I know loads of performers that have got musical theatre degrees, and they're amazing. And yeah. you know, I I just have like a ugh, whatever. Like I know what you mean. So, like they would probably uh, be, still be amazing even if they didn't have the degree. Yeah. Right. Like it doesn't. So you think that like there are certain, and I agree. Like I agree with that like there's a lot of degrees that uh, they don't really add on to someone's talent. Uh, they um just you know, um, they're, they're like, um, an accessory to, and like, a an extra to someone's already, you know, um, existent talent and efforts. And that's one of those cases. It's like, it would be like a dance degree or, you know, writing degree. Like if you, anything yeah. that's like art or talent, like something that actually you need a lot of talent with, like you can have a degree in that, but if you don't have like that like talent in you like already like a talent thing like that's like inborn then um it's not gonna like magically make you you know become like a a performer if you're just not already naturally talented so I get what you're saying yeah I think and I do think people can learn how to do it absolutely and you know half of it is confidence um and it's uh, it's about kind of getting over yourself and your own doubts and stuff and just going and doing it because you know like the time I make the most mistakes is when I'm like um having the most uh doubts and confidence issues is when I actually mess 
steps up more rather than if I just kind of go well, let's do it you know so yeah yeah but as an industry very stressful I think people that um are in that industry I have mad respect for it um because I don't think it's easy at all um I think it's very cutthroat yeah and yeah um you know the arts is always like the first thing to go it's undervalued quite a lot um I saw a I saw a thing on on Twitter I refuse to call it x because what the hell yeah um, same. but it was on twitter and there's a there's a twitter page called no context humans and it just said what is a job that is um underpaid overpaid and doesn't contribute anything to the world and the amount of people but that put things about the arts i was like wow. oh this is making me so sad like people really don't care about the arts at all um you know so which is really sad yeah. because arts when you think about just arts in general performing um you know um just you know things like painting music all of that it was things that back then it was commissioned and it was people paid big money for those things and i mean it also shows that the state of how how undervalued just artists are in general and underpaid and all of that because that's the mentality like even if we keep up yeah. with this mentality like it's just going to be more more uh let, let's say like soulless um a high stuff and less uh about you know creating and exploring like the creative like the craft person's ability to uh the craftsmanship you know, so that also shows a lot. But yeah, someone is asking, sorry to kind of uh, switch the topic, but someone is asking about your uh, tap dance skills. My tap dance skills. I could do a shuffle ball change and that's about it. <laughs> wow. That sounds cool. It's like, I don't even know how to do it. It's like ba da ba da ba da ba da. That's the the rhythm, but that sounds yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm not a tap. I, I'm really not a dancer, and um, yeah, my tap dancing is kind of non-existent. But yeah, but I had to do it at uni, though. You know, you have to do everything. It's like we did sword fighting. You know what I mean? I'm better at sword fighting than I am at tap dancing. <laughs> That's really cool. I gotta tell you, that is cool. That's why no one, no one mess with Kellycopter. If you are watching this, if you are thinking about doing anything to her, don't mess with her. She'll grab that sword and she will slice you. <laughs> well, I can only do it fake though. I only know how to do fake don't fights. Don't say that online. <laughs> you are good at it. <laughs> no, it's a fake fight. It's a stage fight. So you never actually hit it. Like it's all, you know, it's know all you... choreograph choreography. Kelly, I know that YouTube censors, but you can say the truth. You know how to use a sword. Okay. Okay. I'm an assassin. I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> She's a what? Puts in the title. <laughs> Disclaimer, not an assassin. Um, someone is asking if you ever considered uh, doing burlesque. Hmm. <laughs> I have seen many burlesque performers and it's amazing, but I am definitely not that ballsy at all. Um, I think it's still an art form and incredible, but uh, no, <laughs> is the answer to that. I mean, I would love to try. That's like one of the things I would like to try. If like, you know, yeah, my scary. back scary. could function now with that. But, uh, you know, uh, that and also um, something that... Some people would say it's not art, but I think it is pole dancing. Yes. Yeah, you have to have a lot of strength to do to do that. Yeah. You know, I can't even do a pull up. Like I literally cannot even do a pull up. I can't so do a pull up now. I would be terrible at that. But yeah, I am um, I think it's I think it's all really, really cool. Um I think so. And speaking of musicals, because we were talking about musical theater, I want to know if you have a favorite musical. I do, yes. My favourite musical is In the Heights, written by Lynn manuel Miranda. It's very, very good. I've loved it since 2008. It's um, about um, a bunch of people living in kind of like, like, it's all very Hispanic and that's kind of the culture of it, but it's, um, they're all living in this um, 
sort of cul-de-sac and the power is going out it's like my headphones um and um they are all trying to win the lottery and it's just a really fun story it makes me cry it makes me laugh the music is incredible um same person who wrote hamilton if if anybody uh needs the reference of the who wrote it so you can imagine the music style um it's amazing and yeah i think that's i think that would be my favorite i absolutely love it what's your favorite do you have a favorite i mean you just gave like something super interesting and, and like you know representative of your of your musical theater degree so me saying something like greece is gonna be nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that at all greece is classic i just love it one not two just one yeah agreed two is very problematic <laughs> I mean, I have never watched it. I don't want to even hear about it. It's like Mean Girls. It's not a musical. I mean, it's a musical now, but you know what I mean? It's like the Mean Girls 1 and 2. Like, don't talk to me about number 2. Like, no. Um, you know? Um, don't, don't, talk, you. don't talk to me about number 2 sounds wrong. <laughs> People, you know what I meant, okay? <laughs> I mean, I, I think I, I like Grease. It's cute. Oh you yeah, know, I I like yeah. her especially. I'm not crazy about you know John Travolta and stuff, but um, uh, I I think a lot of people watching this also are not crazy about him. Probably not. Uh, you know what though, he's really good in Hairspray. Mm, I I think I watched it, but I can't remember him. I can only remember a short lady no. with the with the nice hair. I can only remember that actor. Yeah, that's crazy. John Travolta plays Tracy's mum, Edna. Oh. And it, he's in drag. He's all in drag. Oh. Um, it's, very, it's very cool. I like that. That's, I don't remember him. He was him. good in that movie. I enjoyed it. It's crazy how I don't remember him at all. I just remember her. I don't remember him at all. But yeah, I mean, Grease is like the classic. And then, I mean, um, for all my um, millennials out there, High School Musical yes come on absolutely. it's a classic it a classic it's a classic <laughs> um some people here are talking about greece 2 is great you're all wrong <laughs> no you can have your opinion but i think there's it's a very problematic movie there's so many just you know there's a song that they're singing that's like we should have sex for our country because that's what our country wants. It's awful. And I'm like, oh, very problematic. No, it's like <laughs> baby boom. <laughs> no, no, I don't like it. I do think Cool Rider is a good song, though. The one that Michelle Pfeiffer sings, that's that one. Is, that one slaps. That one can stay. <laughs> and um, yeah, Peggy agrees that sadly, John Travolta was good in Hairspray. Damn it. Yep. <laughs> definitely um it's hard to admit when someone well that's the thing speaking of artists like how can you s like someone's art but not like the artist it's hard to separate both you know some people can do it easily i have some trouble with that separating art and artist yeah no i, I totally hear you i totally hear you on that I still think Michael Jackson has bangers of tunes. You yeah, know? But... I mean, there is a lot of controversy with whatever people say he did. Um, the thing is, like, it's still out there. Like, people don't really... Did he do anything? Did he not? Are these, you know, I guess we'll never know. Can't speak for himself now. He can't speak for himself. Like, we really will never know. Um, it's very... You know, um, I mean... Michael Jackson's uh, spirit, if you are out there listening to this, send a sign to Kelly. Um, if Don't, my stream is already yeah, cursed that's how right I'm gonna now. Do it. If um, you are innocent, leave the screen as it is. If you are guilty, mess up the screen and make Kelly go small or big or however this is working. Did you change the light? Not me. Yeah, I did. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 oh 
one was. Was it that one? I was like, whoa. I was like, whoa. Did I just catch a ghost? Do you believe in ghosts? I don't know. I don't think so. But there's always a chance. I've never seen one, so. <laughs> I mean, they're transparent. I think no one's seen them. Then it goes transparent. I'm wondering. Oh, are they trans? Are they transparent? I don't know. Are Honestly, ghosts no transparent? Idea. Whoever is listening, please let me know in the comments section in the live chat. Are ghosts transparent? And that is why we cannot see them, and we will never know if they exist or not. That is my question to you guys. Please answer me and let me know what is going on with the ghosts. And um, meanwhile, I want to know what's been on your playlist lately, like over the past week. Okay. Um, I have got one awesome Christmas song that I listen to because it's the best Christmas song ever. And it's a cover of Wham's Last Christmas by Sammy Ray. And it is the best version of that song ever. And you should all listen to it. And it's the only Christmas song I'll happily listen to at any point in the year. So wait, better than Wham itself? Yeah. I dare say it. That's edgy. You listen to it. You listen. You tell me. Are you sure? 10 out of 10. I stand by it. You lock your answer. You lock your statement. Locked in. <laughs> yes. Locked in. <laughs> well, do you have any other cover that you really enjoy the cover more than the original? It doesn't need to be Christmas stuff. Mm. Dirty Loops. I don't know if you know them. They have really good covers of songs and they oh. do the most crazy stuff on stage um what, can you repeat the name they've got a, some dirty loops never heard of them they're very cool um they do really really good covers of stuff and originals um but they do a cover of circus by britney spears which slaps and yeah you should definitely listen to them they're, they're very cool very chaotic and crazy but the guy can sing so good and has it has this riff in a song called Hit Me, um, which is like a, a bop, but the riff has like 54 notes in it. It's insane. It's just like I'm so glad like you that. gave an example because I was like, how is how is note? How do you know the note? The notes are there. I didn't count it, but somebody <laughs> did, and I was like, wow, that's a lot of notes. <laughs> so you were. So yeah, I would say that for sure. So you. Try to find out if someone counted the notes to know if... I googled it. I just put, like, how many riffs are in that and somebody had obviously done the work, so... Can't take credit. Someone else did the work. Some Redditor did the work. <laughs> and here I am taking credit for it. I mean, the fact that you get so curious about music and that kind of stuff that you even Google it, you're a pro. That's another sign that you're a pro. I Google everything, though. <laughs> everything? Well, you know, and someone's like, what about this? I'm like, I don't know, Google it. Like, I don't know how we'd live without Google. I have no idea. Uh, with those big books that people, you know, like the is, is encyclopedia. Yeah. And uh, magazines, like magazines had tutorials and explanations for every random thing ever. People did that back True. then. Uh, so I think that that was how it was, how it went down. Well, times have changed <laughs> and I love, I love Google. I'm here for Google. I was Google owns YouTube and we love them. <laughs> not sponsored by Google. Are you not? Kind of, uh, in a way. <laughs> how is kind of? Well, because they own the platform YouTube. Oh, so. yeah. I mean, I I like Google, but I also think there's some problematic, creepy things about Google, which 
Ooh. It, you're gonna con- are you gonna expose them? I wasn't gonna. I mean, there's they've already been exposed. There's a few documentaries that are really cool about that kind of stuff. Um, I for I forgot the name. There's one that's really really cool. I would recommend, actually, about Google. It's a bit aged now. It's kind of oldish, but it's like uh, Google the the oh Google in the world brain. That documentary was like my my like I became that emoji. You know the one with the with the brain that pops out. <laughs> Yeah. Whoa. Like, that was crazy. Um, very interesting, intriguing things that happen. <laughs> Someone said, when Google didn't exist, we used to shrug our shoulders and stay wondering. Just like that. Like that, like that emoji. <laughs> I think we nailed it. I mean, um, sometimes I don't like Googling because I'm too lazy to actually type it. So what I do is just make up my own theories about things. And I never confirm if it's true or not. So it's a great strategy for life. <laughs> <laughs> do you? Hey, we've been, we've been going a long time, you know, hon. We we're going... We're going... Um... Around 45. One, one hour and 45. So we, we're going 90 minutes. Yeah. Have people watched us for this long? Wow. Hi, guys. Hope you're enjoying Honestly, it. Honestly, <laughs> I hear this is the great thing about OBS is that you can't see how many people are watching. So I have like no clue. I don't know if there's two people, 10. No idea. No, I'm just rolling. I am really, if I'm making a fool of myself, then I am making a fool of myself. I'm a meme. I'm I maybe I'm a no, meme already. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. Thanks. When are you? This is another music question that I have, and probably one of the final ones. When are you releasing music for us? That's my answer to that. But we so no idea. If, if we want to listen to that song again, the one from your last live, we need to go to your last live and um, loop it back and forth. Yeah, I know it's not great, is it? I should try and get it on something like um I don't know Apple or or Spotify or something. I don't know how to do that, but I'll figure it out. Yeah. You will. We want to, we want to, you know, we want to stream it. We want to put it, we want it to be the bop of every Christmas party. Okay. It's doable. I'll, um, I will definitely figure out how to get it, you know, on the, um, on those streaming things. Cause I just don't know anything about that. So, uh, yeah, it's I'll easy. look into it. And you can I will. Do it. I believe in you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So thanks for having me. It's been fun. Yeah, it was great having you. Um, thank you so much for being the first, the very first guest of Trauma Llamas and Pajamas. And she did not disappoint. There was laughter. There was serious stuff. There was scary stuff. There was just everything, a little bit of everything for everyone. And puppet. And puppet show. Impromptu puppet show. Just everything. And I loved having you here, Kelly. Thank you so much. It was great, especially because you, I was your, no, you were my first um, interview, um, for those who don't know. And it's still not up on the channel yet. I'm so slow it's with that. Okay. If anyone ever inter- interviews with me, it will take me ages to actually get it uploaded. And I'm really sorry it's about that. Okay. But take when it comes girl. out, I hope you enjoy it. Um, but if you don't want to miss when Kelly will publish the interview and she will publish the interview, we are all sure will. she will. But since it is an unknown surprise time, the only way we'll ever find out is if you subscribe right now to Kelly. <laughs> so you have right. to subscribe right now to Kelly at Kelly Copter. That's the name. Kelly Copter um on youtube and um 
you will not miss when she posts that interview, the other interview, any other interview, any other video, any other live, any other game night, anything. You'll be there, you'll know, you'll be notified, and you'll just have a blast because Kelly is a breath of fresh air and she's super fun and um, just everybody loves her, really. <laughs> Mate, you are too cute. Thank no. you. Um, you are a legend. And I'm sure all the people here have enjoyed this with you and <laughs> will watch the rest of your series, as will I. I'm excited to see who else you bring on for Trauma Llamas and Pajamas. Um, and I'm sure it will continue to be hilarious. I hope the puppet show theme continues. I think you should run it through and, and get everyone to, to add a segment. That could be fun. Yeah, but... I don't know. This was fun because, like, you had the potato, and that was like, nye, 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 that was like cute. You know, I don't know if the llamas will be like, will have that much on stage chemistry with with anyone else. Well, you never know. <laughs> Just make sure they're ready, just in case. You know. <laughs> No, it's been awesome though. Thank you so much for having me. Thank it's been very you. Fun. you are a joy, a joy to talk with always. Oh, thank you. She's so nice. Come on, guys. She is too nice. I just want to like drop a freaking uh, thing I have here on the screen. I want people to see this because I prepared this just for this stream and for this stream only. So please brace yourselves because I need to drop this little cute thingy. Um, don't want to make a mistake. Here it is, guys. You can cheer up and if you're feeling sad you look at the slama on screen and you will not feel sad anymore okay guys this is the vibe so um besides that i will put here the at of kelly copter in case you don't know so there is kelly copter and a helicopter there and there is her handle if you can look it up on youtube you will find her there uh and this is me Jennifer Hachia, this is how you pronounce it, <laughs> and it's at Ego Next Door, and um, yeah, guys, just have fun, uh, have the rest of a great night, now Kelly is going to sleep, because she has to work, uh, look at her, so cute, I will finish this stream with a beautiful, beautiful Kelly song so this will end with a one song that i saved up in my sleeve and this is how i'm gonna end it and then we'll have the outro which is cute stay till the end of kelly's song if you want to see the outro that i edited <laughs> and thank you so much kelly for being here thank you so much for accepting this for being the first one and i hope to have you again maybe in a few months or so and uh yeah, have a great Bye. night, everyone. Have a great night, Kelly. And thank you so much, guys. I'm going to leave you with yeah. Kelly. Bye. It's not true. Tell me I've been lying. Crying isn't like you Ooh. What the hell did I do? Never been the type to Let someone see Say you were trying to make me laugh And nothing has to change today You didn't mean to say I love you I love you But I don't want to
There's nothing you could do or say I can't escape the way I 